All right, guys. Jennifer wanted me to do a little more videoing, <clears throat> so here we are. Froze last night, and uh, oh, I started the sprinklers about 2:30 in the morning, and uh, I had one sprinkler that, for the life of me, I could not get it to come clean, and I just went through it here, and it looks like I had a small stone that got wedged in there just right, so. I had enough water going through it to protect, but it was not full stream. So now, now I got this fixed. I'm going to put this back together, and uh, we're going to take it down on the marsh. It's a Sunday today, but when you're in frost season, it doesn't matter what day of the week it is. You have to uh, take care of business. It looks like we are clear. Putting a light on it to get a shine through. Yep, looks good. So we're going to take that down, put it back together. We have to set all the thermometers for tonight because it's going to freeze hard. They're forecasting 23. So that, that's going to be a long night. But um, sooner or later it's going to warm up. It has to, right? All right, I got a motor here. So our renovation bed, one of the two that we're replanting this year, it finally uh, dried up nicely from all the rain that we got last week. So tomorrow I will start plowing in tile with the help of Jennifer and Peter and Sam. So I'll have to get all the lines marked. I get the tile plow on the tractor and we will be plowing drain tile. You know, I need to set that thermometer and I just drove right by it. What am I thinking? Well, you know, when you're your own boss, sometimes you gotta chew, chew your own behind. All right, we're gonna set this thermometer. This is always the warm one. So this got down to 34, but that was 34 under the sprinklers. So that's what you want, because you don't want it uh, freezing hard and killing your new growth. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, it's kind of hard to see here, you know, with lighting and everything, but we got some buds that are just swelling. Um, we got somewhere, we already have new growth. Um, you know, there's a half inch new growth there, easy. Everything's waking up. Hard to believe that in a month they'll be in full bloom, but it'll happen. So that sprinkler's back, back in the lineup, and we should be good to go for tonight. I just have uh, two more thermometers to set. So we have to actually replace this thermometer. The one I have here is quite old. In fact, this thermometer was my dad's. So he's been gone nine years. So. Just, the thermometer was not very accurate, so I want to replace it. Get a little bit better reading. Make sure my float is in the right spot. See, these thermometers have a black float. I don't know if you can see that in there. Can you see that float? And when it gets cold, that black float goes down with the temperature. And then in the morning when the temperature comes back up, it stays down at the coldest spot. So you know how cold it got, at least under your sprinklers. And I see they have changed the distance. Well, how do you like that? All right, well, we're gonna have to make some changes. Let's see if we can fix this. So, that has to be right about there. So we'll drill a new hole. Put in a new nail. Let's see if that'll work. Look at that. Uh, it's always nice when you can fix a problem with a hammer or a cordless screwdriver. I'm gonna leave this one here and compare it to this one. 
and just see if they're both close or where the problem is. All right, guys, we're setting the final thermometer here. So let's see, we're just going to keep this easy. I want to try to show it, but I need, I need both my hands. All right, how are we going to do this? All right, I'm just going to see if I can set this in the vines. I know, it's a mess. Maybe I'll prop it on my leg. How's that? Okay. Gonna drop that. Dropping the cold marker. Okay. Reset. Ready for tonight. Engines are full of diesel. Ready to roll. High price diesel too. But I don't know, as a farmer, you can't choose. You need fuel. I like to keep one thermometer off the marsh just to measure temperature where it's not under a sprinkler. We call it the hole. So I'm just, I used to have the thermometer over here. I need to make a spot for it and we will measure how cold it gets. I think I want it right around in here. I think we'll put it right here. I may have to make another hole. Is that gonna work? I'll drop that cold marker down. Well, we are ready for frost watch. Good morning. I'm jumping in on Warren's video, so he I don't know what he filmed yesterday, but he was gonna film like a week in the life cranberry farmer type of thing. And anyway, I'm just jumping in here because last night it froze hard. Maybe later today he'll give you kind of an update of temperature and things like that, but it froze hard. And what happens when it's going to freeze is that he gets the sprinklers. So you see the sprinklers going down there. I'm filming from the warmth of the house right now, just for your... <laughs> <laughs> just for your knowledge. So he actually started up the sprinklers last night at about 10 to 10 and then he has to run them all through the night. So starting up takes him a little bit over an hour, about an hour and 10 minutes or so to start everything up and then get down, you know, just he has to go through starting up two engines as well as driving and looking at all the lines, making sure there's no plugs and that everything is sprinkling properly. And then he checks on them every couple of hours. He will go, he'll get up out of his warm bed. I know he would never say anything like that to you, but he does. <laughs> he gets up out of his warm bed. He goes out into the cold and checks on the sprinklers. Again, just driving up and down every one of the dikes, checking on all the sprinklers to make sure that they're all, um, that there's no plugs in a sprinkler head or that, that you know, nothing froze because it can get so cold where actually the sprinklers freeze up and then he would have to go out and like kind of um, break that ice. I don't think that happened last night. He didn't mention anything to me. When you saw his truck drive by just a minute ago, that's because he's shutting everything down because it's 20 after seven and the sun is up and things are warming up above freezing. Bam. Well, again, I'm interjecting with my two cents. <laughs> I mentioned to Warren again, I said, hey, I thought you were filming a week in the life. And he's like, I just can't film and work at the same time. So here we are, we're out, it's afternoon. It's all, when I say afternoon, actually it's four o'clock. And Sam is home from school. So that means it's time to plow in the drain tile. That's what this is. This is drain tile. Underneath there's just like a black plastic ribbed tube and it has little holes in it and then it has this sock over top of it so this is going to get buried underground and then the idea behind drain tile is that any water that is uh, in the soil will filter through this little um, perforated sock here then it'll go into the tube and the tube is running from one end of the cranberry bed to the other and then it'll drain out into a ditch yes Exactly, Maria. 
thingy. Yep. What's that called? A hole? It's not a hole. It's got a real specific yep. name. A tooth? I mean, if you nope. Want. Lily's Starts with a T. To to trench. trench. It's I called a trench. So Dad already did the trench, yeah. and that's where the that's where this tile here is going to get laid into there. Let's get moving. Because all three that's of these cool. lines are going in today. Do your thing, Dad. Very good. You okay back there, Sam? Right away, yeah. It's a lot better now that we don't have to harness you to the back. I know. Remember when you were littler? <laughs> yeah. We had to put them, we'd put Peter on the back of the tractor to feed the the drain tile through the plow. We'd put them on the back of the tractor and put them in a safety harness to attach them to the tractor. But he's bigger now, stronger, doesn't need that. <laughs> right? We have two lines in. It's going really well. Like, That's really well. Left. I think, you know what makes this go so fast? What? Last year's beds were over like twice as long as this. Well, Those we do really, have that long one. We do have that long one. This is a short bed. Like number five and six bed. Right. It's really long. You hear us use the word bed. That really, that just refers to this. Just everything you see right here. So from that ditch, and then there's like the road or the dike to that pile of dirt right there which there will be a ditch yeah, that like a and from field. this end just a second from that end to that end but it's like a field field below ground level that mm -hmm. just has uh that's just surrounded by a ditch of water on all four sides right that's what we call a bed so sometimes i'll see in the comments people will refer to it as a cranberry field or they'll say how many fields do you have or how many whatever out east they will oftentimes refer to this section what i'm referring to as a bed as a bog um, we've just i guess in wisconsin we just call them cranberry beds each one is a bed and they can be anywhere from i suppose you could have any size bed you want like Here, our smallest one was one that Nick and Emily no. and Amber were Yeah, here. that was not necessarily like a bed. Three and a half. Our smallest is like just over an acre. Yeah. Or number one oh. and number two, I think, are pretty small. No, I'm talking about our high red one. I know, I know what counts. you're talking oh, about, number Peter. One is, number one is. Isn't number one like 1.19 acres or something like that? Anyway, and our biggest is five. So for de determining, because I know there's going to be a question about determining bed size, why you would want one one acre or one five acres or whatever. Well, originally it went with lay of the land. And a lot of our smaller beds are small because back in the day the equipment was smaller. Now equipment's gotten bigger. You know, now we use drain tile and, and you don't want to mess around with little beds. You want big beds so that you can get more production. And, yeah. but it makes everything easier. Less dikes, ditches, 
all of it. So this is going to be the third line, and this is only going to take us not too long. Under, I was going to say, just about under 20 minutes, right? Yes, they do. And I have two ingredients. Look at that. Mm. And... Oh, no. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, no. Okay, I know those things are sweet enough by themselves, but what I'm going to do is turn those into cookies and cream blondie bars. It is just such a family favorite, and it also is the favorite of a number of the people that come and help us plant cranberries. We don't plant every single year because cranberries are a perennial. Did you know they can live and continue to produce cranberries? The cranberry vines can for 25, 35, 45 plus years. So we have planting coming up tomorrow and we will probably have about well over 20 people. I'm thinking we're I'm thinking we're going to have maybe well not well over. I think we're going to have about 21 or 22 people uh, planting that does not include Warren because he actually is doing the disking in, which is like the actual planting of the cranberries. We're all what we call vine shakers. Anyway, I will get to all of that, but I need to get some food prepped for tomorrow because we will be coming in for lunch and I just like to make sure that everybody is well fed. So the first thing I'm going to do is get going on making the Oreo cookie blondies. Since I'm doubling the recipe, which this chocolate chip blondie recipe is on page 47 in my A Country Life cookbook, and I'm doubling it. So I have one cup of butter in here melted, and then I also put in three cups of brown sugar. I know that's a lot, and these are pretty sweet bar, but you know what, everyone's going to be working hard tomorrow, and I think that they are probably going to appreciate and have, and be glad that I made these. <laughs> one. Come on, two. Do you like the fancy way you do it? Three. And come on. Four. So we're going to get this mixed up. I'm going to put in two teaspoons of vanilla, three cups of flour, some baking powder, and some salt. And then we're going to add in the cookies and the candy bar. Peter's using those. When I'm making a double batch of any bar that goes into, normally would go into a 9 by 13 pan, I just use these big half sheet, I think that's what these are called, half sheet 
Nordic Ware pans, and it just works really well. I do find I have to bake it just a little bit longer because they are a little bit thicker than if I were to do it in like two 9x13s, but it still works really, really well for doubling a recipe, like when you're having a big group, a graduation party, things like that. 20 minutes later here and the bars are done. Actually, I'm just watching for them to get kind of puffed and then cracked. As soon as that happens with blondie bars or with brownies, that means that they are done. Peter also is with me in the kitchen here. He's been working on a project. So we have a whole bag of pretzels. And what are you doing? Dipping them in, in chocolate and taking them out. Mm-hmm, like almond bark. We had some almond bark. This is actually left from Christmas, mm -hmm. some that we didn't use. And I thought this would be a great use for it. Although we're struggling with it staying melted. Yeah. We had it, you know, like in this double boiler system here, and I don't know, it kind of keeps getting firm, and so then we turn it off. And the we added a little like shortening. Cooked. Yeah, the bottom is of the chocolate is almost getting a little cooked. Let's stir it. We find I find that the more we stir it, the better um, and also liquidy with it this, stays. It's getting harder. And it okay. Like yep. It's gonna snap off. Okay. After all those sweets that we made, we're gonna have to. I feel like I have to redeem myself with some good healthy vegetables. So, I'm putting together a little veggie tray for tomorrow. I think when everyone comes in for lunch, this will probably go over very well too. Especially if it's hot, which it's not supposed to be overly hot. But every day this week, they keep saying it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be cool. It's gonna be cool. But it just keeps being warm and sunny and like really warm so and I'm loving it well good morning everybody it is planting day it is a gorgeous day it's not gonna get overly hot which is a nice thing um, yeah one dump truck is already down Eska's here Amber's here Hello. Good morning. yeah she's here Eska Eska you gonna run around hopefully she doesn't cause too much trouble Oh. Tony told me not to bring her out, but I was like, I can't just leave her home all day. <laughs> Looks like Nick is pulling up. Eska, come here. Eska! I said, I forgot. I said, oh, the. Yeah. yeah. You gotta have that. Look here. You gotta have that. Um, I think the Reese's. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good morning, Joseph. Um, we're a minute late. I've been trying to wake up Joe, oh, since about seven o'clock this morning. He's turned definitely into the teenager, right? Yes, yes, you are turning into the, I wanna sleep in the mornings. Shake it for me. You like Luke Bryan? Yes. Yes, you like his music, don't you? Mm hmm All right, well, you need to finish up your sausages and we need to get, you need to get dressed. We need to get you dressed. I don't need to get you dressed. You need to get yourself dressed, right? Yeah. Yeah, we need to get going. Everybody's already down on the marsh working. I'll give you all a quick rundown here. I have some ham here that I'm warming. I also have some nacho cheese sauce and I have the barbecued chicken. I have the baked potatoes ready to go. I will come up um, ahead of everybody to put these in the oven. I'll probably come up, put them in the oven, and then go back down. I kind of wanted to do it in the crock pot, but I only have three crock pots and they're all being used right now. And I just couldn't come up with a better way at this point. I suppose I could have brought up my Nesco. That would have worked. Well, I didn't. So anyway, I'll just come up an hour in advance, pop these in the oven, and then head back down. I had Peter clean up some grapes this morning. I have a couple containers waiting right here. I have a watermelon I'm gonna cut up. And what I'll do is when I come up to put the potatoes in the oven, I'll also cut up the watermelon so that's ready to go, set out plates, that type of thing, and then head back down until Warren says, let's break for lunch. Ah! <laughs> Joe, I didn't know it was gonna hit us here. All right, we're gonna have to talk really fast then. So if you are new here and have never, like you just stumbled upon my videos here for the first time, we are Cranberry Farmers and those over there oh, are lucky. cranberry vines. I so those be. were mowed 
a few weeks ago now and Warren, hey, my husband, has been keeping them well watered so that they don't dry out even though they may look dead <laughs> to the untrained eye, oh they actually um, they actually have life in them still. Mm -hmm. We will I will show you the process of what we do with these cranberry vines that have been mowed and kept wet. Um, here in just a second, Joe and I are heading down on the marsh. I'm going to stay a good distance back here because the excavator is pretty loud. But what's happening is that is the other dump truck full of cranberry vines and Warren just is in the excavator and what he's doing is putting piles of cranberry vines along the edge of the cranberry bed. That sandy brown area is a cranberry bed. This one is, well we have to do a total of about 3.6, 3.7 acres today and yeah there's the crew and see where they've already planted and where they haven't planted. So we'll just be working our way down uh, planting and good morning Sparky. Good morning. Time for sunscreen. It's cold. It's probably amazing. it probably does it yeah the water is so cold or the vines are so wet and cold. So anyway I better get down there. I see some people looking up my way. I don't know if that they're wondering if I'm filming or if they're wondering if I'm gonna get to work. So let's just go and I'll give you an up close look at this. So up close this is what the cranberry vines look like. It's a long woody stem and yeah, most of this greenery actually is going to die off before it shoot, sends out roots. But um, yeah, by next year it's going to be, this whole thing will be just a carpet of green cranberry vines. We have our mascot dog here keeping watch. <laughs> Alright, well everybody is kind of falling into a good pattern right now. And you can see what happens is they just take a clump of the cranberry vines and shake them. And what's the two word, what's our two word motto out here guys? Yes, who said that? Yes, A for Eli, no clumps. So no clumps, no clumps. We're just trying to shake them in a nice even layer. And let's get down close and look at what that looks like. So it looks like Nick is just sort of filling in some areas. If if he sees something that looks a little thin, he'll go back and fill it in. Tony is pitchforking vines to the other side so that everybody over there has some vines to spread as well. Well, Amber's back. Yep. How many years have you done this? <laughs> uh, oh, I don't even know. Like since I've lived here, every year, <laughs> every how many times we planted. Yep. What's your That's favorite? Different. What's your favorite Sit. part about planting cranberries? Sit. What's your favorite part about planting cranberries? <laughs> oh, she's done. <laughs> What do you want for lunch today? Are you here for the food? She heard food. She's like, what? <laughs> How are you doing, Maria? Good. How's the, how's the spreading vines going? Good. What's your favorite part? Lunch. Lunch? <laughs> are you sure? Mm -hmm. What are you looking forward to? The Oreo bars. The Oreo bars. How about chips and cheese? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that too. too. Huh? Yeah. That's it, just a yeah. yeah. First time. She's a first timer. No. Thumbs up. Oh yeah. With dirty hands. <laughs> oh yeah. This is more than you did last year, Joe. Ah. Look at you actually shaking some vines. That's amazing. Alright, this is the planter. Just a disc on the front. And Warren goes back and forth disking in the vines because how this works is that the disc pushes a cranberry vine down into the sand and that makes kind of like a little bend. Two halves of the vine stick up, the other part goes down and that's what roots. It will just send out roots and then it will root right into the sand. And so this has to be kept quite moist um, and not dry out at all because those little tender roots can dry out fast. So anyway, he's just gonna have to keep this well watered. We did the same thing last year on a five acre bed. 
and I think you would find it interesting to see just what it looks like this year now. So Warren will go this direction and then he will go back uh, perpendicular just to make sure that all the vines are in tight. Hey Sparky, how does this compare to your day job? Uh, I have a desk job. <laughs> so is this more fun? Less yeah. fun? Yeah, this is more fun. Oh, don't let your boss hear that. <laughs> how about Peter. you, Peter? That's not very helpful. Huh? Peter's gonna say the exact same thing. What? What do you think? Would you rather be doing school today? No. How about you, Amber? Is this better than your day job? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I would much rather be out here than at the hospital. So you want to do this full-time then? I mean, maybe not full-time, but, <laughs> but... Once a year isn't bad. I can do with that. Casual. Casual. We're casual right casual. here. Casual. Yep. Casual. Who roped you into doing this? Uh, no one really roped me in. I just came up from Indiana and I had yes. nothing better to do, so I came here. So you're here with your cousins? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Is this what you expected it to be? Pretty much. They they let you in on what was happening and not really I just knew. you just knew awesome well we're glad to have you here thank you victoria is back this year we didn't we didn't kill her last year huh no, you did it. <laughs> good, good. And you brought your sister? Yes, I did. It was so fun. She's like, little sis, big sis? Little sis? Little sis. She's like, little sis, you gotta come along, right? <laughs> did she have to twist your arm to come? No. No? You're like, yeah, I can do that. Lily's back and she brought extra people with her this year. How did you get your sister to come? I just told her that she had to, basically. Basically. Because <laughs> it's fun. So much. A bit Lots dirty, of but... <laughs> Definitely dirty, right? Yeah, did she tell you you were going to get this dirty? Uh, I don't know, she didn't really tell her much. She was just like, it's a Saturday. <laughs> I was like, okay. Okay, and they're here. Well, thank you. Lots of other people said that they were here because they, because it was fun and they, it was good people to hang around with all day. How about you, Sam? Why are you here? Um, because it's family and I had no choice. Right, time to take a drink break. What would you say if I said this is the last year we're ever going to plant? Heck yeah! I would laugh and say you're this. lying. Yeah, I'd definitely say you're lying. Yep, yep. Really? I've dated Amber. Yeah, there, there's plant. no way this is the last year we ever plant. That'd be a total lie. No, I'm no. I'm pretty sure it's the last year we're ever gonna plant. Oh, that's like serious. That really? is serious. I'm serious, guys. Why? But this not, may not be like, it. Not like the last year ever. But well, unless just, someone like else, unless time. somebody else takes over the marsh. But yeah, we're Sam, pretty sure this that no. this is the last time oh in God. Dad's is... history that we're gonna plant. Really? Yep. Oh, no. Sorry to disappoint everybody. <laughs> and we're so hey, happy. And <laughs> I'm like, I've been dreaming of this my entire life. I wish the sun was out more, like that, right there. Like, get that heat. I wish it would get hotter out. I'm just happy to be out here.
We're having a good time. It's fun. Happy the sun's out. Yeah. I feel much better that the sun's out now. It would be better if I was getting burnt right now. I'm loving how this one is half the size of last year's. So. It would be better if I was getting a, a tan during this, but the sun, eh, it's not in my favor right now. That's alright. Uh, the day would be better if it was warmer. I'm better like trampoline park like I love gym. Oh, you'd rather be at a trampoline park? Yeah, I love gym. <laughs> it's potty break time, so I'm just waiting outside and I'm going to look at my flowers. Things are growing so nicely. Everything is filling in. Remember when these pots, they just look like a bunch of little dinky little, little twerpy plants in there. But now look at them. They're just filling everything in so, so nicely. Well, this first bed is planted. Warren still has to disc, though. So I mean, he's been disking as we've been planting, yeah, but but he yeah, doesn't have it all finished yet. Yeah. Everyone's taking a little drink break, and then we're going to head over to the second bed for the day. All right, we moved on to the second bed, and everyone hopped right in. I know I said it last year, I said we've got the best cranberry planters out there and I'm saying it again. They are, they just, they just do it. They just jump in and get it done. It's great. So, all right, I'm going to hop in and start working on it and then I'll probably head up in about 20 minutes to get some lunch stuff all set up. Sure. <laughs> I like how the qu the question was, can you give me a ride to the excavator and you hopped in the driver's seat. I'm not fast well, enough, am I? No, you're not. No fast enough. <laughs> Hang on. Literally, oh my god. We are flying. Oh no. Got stuff to do. If I wasn't doing this today, I would probably be working in my shop today. If I wasn't doing this today, I'd be playing video games. If I wasn't here today, I'd be laying in bed. If I was not here today, where would I be? <laughs> probably on a sandbar, hopefully. Drinking beer. If I wasn't here today, I would probably be fixing up a car right now. One, three, two, one, action. If I wasn't here planting right now, I would probably be in my boat out on the river somewhere with a uh, cold beer in my hand. So Sounds like you'd be with yeah. Tony. Oh yeah. Because that's what he said. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. If I wasn't planting today, I would be in my room listening to my radio, playing with the like, eating Oreo bars. favorite part of planting cranberries is getting to talk to people. Aww. Yeah, it's so sensitive. Aww. I go deep. My favorite part of planting cranberries 
I've seen friends and stuff. My favorite part of planting. Why are you standing over here? That's Go funny. away. <laughs> Is that how you talk to your boyfriend? Answer? Sometimes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, my favorite part of planting cranberries is probably the good food and just being with everybody. Really? Makes the time go by faster when you're and with friends. Your dad. Really? That's true. Yep, and helping good old Warren Brockman. My favorite part about planting cranberries is enjoying it with other friends and then just having a fun time. I'm working on it. Everybody is so sweet. You guys are going to make me cry. My favorite thing about planting cranberries is getting to see people I haven't seen in a while. That's what field delivery looks like today. We are all done with lunch. Everybody's already headed down. I bet they are wrapping up that bed right now. So Emily and I were just cleaning things up in the kitchen and everything. She had to feed Aisley and now she has to change Colt's diaper. So anyway, we're, we're working on getting back down there. And, but I'm pretty sure when we get down there, they're gonna have that bed just about finished because we were so close to having it done before lunch. And I'm pretty sure that now that they can like see the end, everyone's gonna just push through and get it done because they're like, hey, let's make this happen. Ah. All right, this is the post-lunch crew. <laughs> Same crew as the pre-lunch crew, but just a little, a little fuller. Not that much more to go. So from there to there, that's all. That's all that's left to do. And that's gonna go by quicker than quick, isn't it, Peter? What happened to your face? Sparky whoa, did that whoa, to your face? Whoa, whoa. Keep the bear. <laughs> so you deserved it, is that what we're saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So new this year is laying out pipe. Typically Warren does this after he gets the uh, vines all disked in and in, in these beds he has already disked like the horizontal direction and he can disk easily um, around the pipe going the vertical direction. A little bit later tonight he'll do that. He's actually working on the other bed that we all just finished. So we put Nick in charge. I hear Amber's voice a lot too, <laughs> so I'm pretty sure they are large and in charge and uh, just kind of given the rundown of getting the pipe out because it'll just go a lot easier. Honestly, it's just a huge load off of Warren's back if the pipe is in when, when he's done disking, then he can start watering in the vines right away rather than take the at least hour probably that it would take him. Uh, working by himself to put all the pipe in. Colt, he's having just a ball running around. He doesn't know it yet, but when this starts to grow, there's gonna be no running around in it then. So Warren put me in charge of paychecks. So I'm gonna zip up to the house because it's not gonna be real long and they're gonna have this project done. I'm gonna just zip up to the house and get, the, get their pay ready for them. So it's seven o'clock. I think Warren finished at about 6.15 with the disking in of the vines, came up to the house, and then I came down with him. Not because he needed my help, but just, well, I guess I did help him a little bit, sighting. We just kind of straightened the irrigation lines a little bit. He wanted to do one final run or walk through of the irrigation lines, make sure that they were staked just the way he wanted them. 
and now he is spinning valves and you guys saw that the other day so basically what he's doing is he's opening up these valves here so that he can water because in about oh just as soon as we get all these valves spun then he's going to water here tonight for these beds it's specifically for watering in the cranberries because you can see all those lines they go perpendicular that's from the disc on the front of the tractor and what he, that pushes the cranberry vines down into the sand and then you know it like makes a little it almost makes them bend or almost like cut a little bit and pops an end down in the sand and the other end comes up out of the sand and all of those little um, all of those little gaps need to be closed in now to really set the plants in so this sprinkler right here actually is plugged it's spraying in like two streams instead of just one stream, so Warren's gonna check it out. He usually takes a little wire with him. Did you take your special tool? Huh? Did you take your special tool? Green wire. Green wire. That's the key to growing cranberries right there, green wire. Well, that's amazing that you guys got a smile from him. What? It's amazing that they all got a smile from you. I don't even think I smiled when I said that. I, I think you did. That's why I said it's amazing that they got a smile. Well, did you? Sometimes by this time of day. <laughs> did you tell them that I'm in the pissed off and angry mode of sleep deprivation? <laughs> right now? <laughs> right now, yes. I'm running on about three hours sleep. I think in the last four days, I haven't yeah, had eight hours. I know. I don't think so either. Between frost watch and getting ready to plant, it's just been ridiculous. He had another sprinkler over here that was just spraying kind of wonky. And so he hopped out to go check out that one too. And he'll usually wait for it to do like like a pattern or one cycle or to get to the point where it's not gonna spray him and get him all wet when he walks out. The half sprinkler mechanism is broken. It's gonna need to be replaced. He's putting a stake in right now just to mark where there's a couple of gaskets that seem, well, let me show you. Do you see right there that puddle? So there's a gasket right out there that seems to not be seeding quite properly. And so he's just thinking that um, sometimes what will happen is when he brings it up to pressure, then they will seal off properly. But he put a stake in over here and then the other one where I showed you so that tomorrow he can investigate it a little bit more and just see if... I guess then you know which I'm ones just, you're watching for, right? Yeah, I'm just going to replace the gaskets tomorrow. I mean, the gaskets that are in there are old, so... They only last for so long. Another plugged sprinkler, just for comparison, this is actually the cranberry bed that we just planted last year. So if you guys look back at that video, well, it looks similar to this year's video. Um, but yeah, this is what it's gonna look like in a year. All the, all the cranberry vines have vined out and they all have uprights and just growing really, really well. It just starts to make like a carpet of vines. Like what? I don't know. This could it's get interesting. Mystery. Can you hand me that half inch wrench? This one? Um, the other one. Yep. I gotta take the nozzle out. Okay. It's a diamond. A <laughs> diamond? <laughs> Actually, it's just a piece of quartz. <laughs> little pebble. You could put it on a ring, though. You could. Wouldn't look like much. No. All right, so we got to go shut that line down so I can put this back in. Okay. Okay, so we just went to the end of the bed, and he, un he turned off this line, turned the water supply off to this line so that he can put the nozzle back on. 
and then we will go back down, turn the water supply back on, and make sure that it sprinkles properly. All right, everybody. It's 10 after 9. Warren went out just about 20 minutes ago or so to check on the sprinklers. I can't remember if he said he was shutting them down this time or if he was just giving, you know, just checking on them, make sure that there weren't any plugged sprinklers or anything like that, any separations, <laughs> all the things, all the things that can go wrong. He was just checking on that right now. We got the kids in bed, everybody was tired, and I was just kind of tackling, uh, putting some things away, cleaning up. I did clean up a whole lot of the sand in the bathrooms, like our porch area, our schoolroom or entryway area, and the garage. <laughs> but I have not tackled dishes at all yet, and I don't think I'm going to. So we do have some clean dishes that need to get put away, and then this is from the day. <laughs> but we just haven't been in, and I just was emptying out the crock pots. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna leave all of those dishes just right there because I would like to go and take a shower, wash the grime off from the day and the dust and everything because man you just get dirty and then the wind starts blowing and it gets dusty and I just feel kind of grimy right now. And I really hope that this was an enjoyable video for you guys. For us here it really marks something every year. Just really marks like the onset of the cranberry growing season and everything. Just planting and this is just, it's just a great time to get together and reconnect with people. And you know, there's no phones in our faces. Well, there's a camera in their face, <laughs> but there's no phones in their faces. And it's just a great way to connect with everybody. So, so I hope that you all enjoyed this video, just getting to see planting and um, just having me bring the cranberry growing experience, I guess, to your living room. I hope that that was enjoyable for you. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.